All right, so happy Mommy Crush Monday. Again, we had to come back. Um, I was having some technical difficulties, so I'm gonna try to add Sakisa in now. Um, again, we're, today we're talking to Mama Sakisa of Love & Touch Midwifery Services and also um, the founder of the Atlanta Doula Collective, hence why I have on my ADC shirt today, repping the ADC. Um, we're gonna talk about you know, what the, who the ADC is, what they're about, um, why it was founded, um, and we'll also talk about, um, you know, Sakisa's journey in birth work, being a midwife, um, and things like that. So I'll go ahead and um, do the request for her to join us, and then we will get started. So I hope everyone had a great weekend, and... Your week is starting off. I know it just started. I hope it's starting well. So I'm waiting for the request to go through. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Great How are you? you? Great. I'm making the best of it, sis. Yes. <laughs> can I you can hear me okay? I can. I can hear you well. We can All see right, you excellent. good. All your yellow. That's my favorite color. <laughs> hey, you know, I, it's keeping me lifted up, right? Yeah. It certainly is. Winter has this potential to um, decrease the mood. You know, they say the pineal gland actually goes more darn it dormant <laughs> in the wintertime okay. and that's why your creative juices aren't flowing the same yeah. so I find that when I embrace high vibrational colors it really helps to keep you know the mind flowing the thoughts flowing yeah that makes sense yeah for real so I target it awesome <laughs> well that's good to know yeah I love yellow so I can I can feel that because like it just it does it makes you feel better when you have you know, no doubt. when you set the set the tone for yourself. <laughs> you have to. You know what I'm saying? Every day we rise, we got to set those intentions, that tone, that vibration as we move forward throughout the day, that the universe conspire for us, right? Mm -hmm. To us, all the things that we want to, right? Yep. yep. All the negativity. Attract Your sound the just, I can hear you, but it's like it went it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not sure what to do about that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe did you get a message or something? I put my thing, my phone everywhere. Even I put it on Do Not Disturb. Is it okay? Cool? I can hear you good now. Feel I don't know what you just. It's perfect. Whatever you just did, it fixed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be a glitch. My phone don't stop. <laughs> I know. I, I had to put mine on Do Not Disturb too because I was like, I don't need it to mess up this video. Um, <laughs> we gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna try to talk fast in between the glitches, mm -hmm. but we can make it great. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I've already kind of started with like the introduction and what we're doing today. So this is Mama Sakisa. Sakisa um, wow. is a midwife and also the founder of the Atlanta Doula Collective. But I will let her go mm -hmm. ahead and introduce herself and tell you all about her being an author times two and all that <laughs> so go ahead i love it i love it i appreciate that yeah so like you said the founder and the director of the atlanta duba collective we founded the collective in 2017 actually and so it started as a program to um just bridge the gap within our own community a gap that i saw needed to be filled and still currently does and since the inception of the atlanta duba collective it's been um, very exciting and um, to see more collectives all around the nation just blossom and bloom. And I really hope that they're finding inspiration from us. I want to I'd certainly find inspiration from them to keep it moving, to keep the momentum going. But uh, we are just evolving and growing. We started out as an online, I mean, an on-call doula program. 
Uh, like I said, back in 2017, whereas if you were in the hospital last minute and you decided you needed a doula, in most cases, it was a midwife or uh, an obstetrician that was reaching into us to let me know specifically that they had somebody in need of a doula. And then I would dispatch whoever was on call for that day. And so that program was sustainable and it thrived for about, I would say two years, two, three years. We shifted in um, late 2019 to become more of what we are now, which is a, a directory and um, a learning platform. So we do a lot of um, virtual learning, you know, for uh, people so that it can be a barrier free opportunity for a lot of folks. Um, so we have different programs that we run, childbirth education programs. We have the support, Mama Talk programs that we run. And again, all of these right now are virtual. And then we do community stuff. We um, get out in the community and we host programs. That way we teach belly wrapping, baby, baby wearing. We do uh, breastfeeding. I mean, you name it, we in it. <laughs> Soap making, right? It, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I do yeah. my absolute best um, to keep the, the energy high, as I said at the top of the um, chat. And you know, just keep the sisterhood strong and, and keep, you know, the, the vibe uh, feeling good so that every, I find that um, people are most productive when they feel good, mm -hmm. right? So I really do my absolute best to create a space that is just um, um, nourishing for that. It, it nourishes feeling good, joy, yeah. pleasure, all the good stuff, right? Yes. And if I have to say that is... Um... Like what you said about we, you name it, we do it. Like that's one of the things that I think is so beautiful is that every woman in this collective is so dynamic. Like everybody does a little bit of everything. And so we yeah. have made it like you have made it work with using the resources of everyone, you know what I mean? And tapping into all those um those beautiful skills and, you know, skill sets and, and knowledge that we all have. Um, also the sisterhood, like I have never, like I said, I, I don't know a group of women that are that positive all the time, right? Like not yeah. all the time, maybe every day, right? But whenever we get together, it is, it's, um, it's, uh, what's the word am I looking for? Fun. We get stuff done, right? <laughs> we get, but we also get stuff done. Um, I can't right. word that I want to say. But anyway, we get stuff done. Like, and it, really? but we have so much fun doing it. Like, no it's doubt. such a beautiful experience. So I love that. And you do an amazing job of keeping, like you said, everyone's spirits up, mm -hmm. making sure that we're like feeling supported um, and that it's not an environment where we can't thrive because it's, it wouldn't be beneficial if it was right. Like it wouldn't make no sense. Doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Sis. I'm going to shift your language just a little bit. I, I don't use people. I encourage you and I encourage you that <laughs> I support you. If I see a skill set that is um, that we all have unique um, divinely bestowed skill sets. And um, I look at myself, I'm an educator. Well, my mother was a teacher. She was an educator. And I think it's just um, ingrained in me because just from her parenting style to look at her children and, and pull out or encourage or support whatever those uh, unique qualities are that that specific person has to offer. And so that's really what I pride myself on is, um, you know, tapping into you. Encourage, when I see that in you, encouraging you to pull that out and then just helping you to create space um, yes. for that specific talent or skill to thrive. You know, you are also an educator. I see that in you. Um, you just got this, this this thing about you. You love like a sponge. You're like a, mm, like a five-year-old or two-year-old. You just absorb information. You just want to know it all. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me all the information. And then you just you put it in that little brain of yours and you spin it around and make <laughs> it your own. And then you regurgitate it so yes. nicely. So I definitely see that that same quality in you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's why I was, um, I knew you were the perfect person to build upon that, um, our new curriculum that we're putting out there yes. into the community. I was just going to ask you about the training. Why did you, um, so if you want to share about the um, understanding birth work training that we have um, coming up in January um, and For what sure. it is, why did, why you felt it was necessary um, and all the things about the training. Since I can't even take credit, 
you know, I really have to bring it back to you and some of the other ladies on the team, um, listening to the voices that you all had about the, um, the need after you completed certain trainings, um, doula specific entry level doula trainings, mm -hmm. still feeling like there were skills that you were missing. Once she went to birth, she still felt um, a lack of confidence in that space because you, you know, you just felt like you weren't, um, it was, even though the, the training may have been a comprehensive training, you may have, you felt like some pieces or components were missing. Right. And so, you know, that was, I think the, um, in the catalyst or the initiation of the training, the understanding birth work that we're bringing forth, um, in January. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been a lot of fun building that curriculum with you and the dancing doula Mimi, right? <laughs> it's been a lot of fun um, building that curriculum. Uh, <clears throat> I'm learning from you all. You know, I think one of the challenges that I find for myself is once you do become a midwife <clears throat> or you've been doing this work for a certain amount of time, um, there's a certain uh, privilege in, in so in so far as thinking that everybody knows what you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. so I forget sometimes the, the things that you all don't know, and right. the things that you all still have to learn. Um, and so it's been refreshing to work with you all and remember, oh yeah, these are essential and critical components that are that I actually that I didn't get either when I became a doula back in right. six. Um, a lot of these pieces was left out and I forgot about that feeling of uh, incompetence and being in the, uh, in the labor and delivery room and not really knowing how to help. I will go on record as saying my first probably 10 births was trial and error. <laughs> it was me trying to figure it out. So I love the pieces that you all brought to the table, like uh, just so, something as simple as identifying the equipment in the labor and delivery room. Like I had to, I didn't know that going in back then. And I'm sure a lot of birth workers still don't know when they first go to a birth, they're standing there, they, they hear all this beeping and buzzing and, and, and flashing lights and all of these different things. What is that? What does it do? How does that impact, you know, the outcome of this person's um, birth? And so a lot of that for me, I know was trial and error. So again, I give thanks to you all for bringing that back to the forefront of my memory you know, and understanding the, how critical and essential it is that we do uh, impart this knowledge on some of our newer um, birth workers out there. Yeah. I think what just came to me to say was, I think just like parenting, right? Like the calling can come to you all day, but it doesn't come with a handbook, right? So you can feel so like compelled to do this thing and you can feel like it's pulling at you, calling you. But if you you know, if you don't have the framework for it, right? Like, or if you don't have sure. someone to help you, you know, know what it is to do. Cause like you said, my first, I mean, I, I knew a little bit of something, but my first few births too, were like, I'm still learning so many things every time, yeah. you know, I, I experience a birth, whether I assist with you and you teach me something or it's at the hospital and I'm like, oh, wow, okay, this is new. I didn't see this before. So I think that it will be like, that's what I love about this training is that it's not just, and I like that it's also not just coming from someone who like knows all the things and is teaching um, the training, it'll be taught by us who are like actually right. doing the work. So it'll be as we're going through it, as we're learning new things, we'll be able to every time add like, oh, well, I just saw this. So I'm going to make sure that I mention this in the training when I teach it or, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that's the um, one of the beauties of it as well. Um, so, yeah, what, what is agree. it? It's going to be what does it go over? I think we're going to be talking about we'll go over the antepartum, which is right. pregnancy, um, the intrapartum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah. um, postpartum, postpartum, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a three-day training. We're actually going to dive into those things, like you mentioned, those different phases of um, of uh, pregnancy, right? Uh, postpartum, I think, definitely does not get enough attention. Um, the antepartum can even be glazed over in certain aspects, um, which is, again, the antepartum, for those of you who don't know, that's just the pregnancy. That's a fancy word. This means pregnancy. Intrapartum is the labor itself. And then we all, of course, understand what postpartum is after the birth. And so our goal for this training is to, um, again, dive into different um, components of those phases that we have identified that are that are gaps that's missed in a, a entry level 
doula training. And so the uh, it, the antepartum, um, we're going to dive into like something as simple as anatomy. I think the average birth worker or the aspiring doula, I'm not going to say birth worker, that's a blanket term, but the doula um, a lot of times don't really have a full comprehension of even just anatomy. And to me, um, doing this work, anatomy and, and physics of birth is critically, it's critical, right? And like you can be, I tell folks all the time, you can be fully effaced and fully dilated, but if that head is not in the right position, that's a C-section. That, that baby is not coming down. That's physics, right? And so understand how the baby fits into the body and the optimal birthing positions and all of those, you know, all those different components that can create or help to facilitate a vaginal delivery. Those are some of the key components that we're actually going to dive into um, in that um, antepartum or that pregnancy phase. And then, of course, the nutrition. I, that is, nutrition is a soapbox for me. And that really came from the grand midwives that I learned from. They, they, they're, they talk a lot and they, they educate a lot about nutrition and nutrition can, and how it can really shift the overall pregnancy and just your life as, as a whole. And that's awareness that many of us are coming into now, but helping folks be accountable for their nutrition and how they um, um, select the different food items and the different lifestyles that they have, again, to help facilitate a, a vaginal delivery. Um, and then when it comes to the intrapartum labor and delivery, as I mentioned before, we're going to talk a lot about the, the labor and delivery room. We're going to um, help you chime in. You help build this curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for the, I, I was going to say too, when you were talking, one of the things that really like um, blew my mind that I didn't know about until I took um, uh, another training taught by a midwife was about the cardinal movements. Like I had, right. I had no idea about like, that is a whole science to it how is. the baby is, you know? And so when you said about the position, I was like, yeah, like that's amazing. I think that's, you're touching on that in the antepartum as well, right? The cardinal, mm -hmm. movements. The cardinal movements of birth, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 a plus in it. Like that's top tier in itself <laughs> if you get in that in your in your doula training. Um, but yeah. yeah, so the intrapartum will be talking about um, your like Sakisa said, your different instruments in the in the room in the hospital room. So you know, home birth is becoming um, so popular, and it's like it's an amazing, beautiful experience. If you ask me what I prefer, I prefer home birth all day, but. <laughs> everyone's not comfortable with that um right. not only is everyone not comfortable home birth is still only what like one person two percent of births um yeah the, the i don't know what the latest study is since covid but pre-covid right. it was one percent of all births in the u.s <clears throat> and you're right everyone is not a candidate you have to be a candidate for home birth as well right. that too so everyone's mm -hmm. not a candidate which that is really important because you may want a home birth but you may not qualify um, exactly. for home birth and then, um, you know, some people are not comfortable, you know, with birthing at home and they're still choosing to birth in the birth center or in the hospital. Right. And that's OK. Right. But we need to know how to support them in the hospital. It's definitely night and day um, as far as the support right. is concerned and what it looks like. And so, sure. um, you know, even though I would prefer home birth, if I'm completely honest, hospital birth is kind of near and dear to my heart because that's where. I usually have to my, have to put my advocacy hat on and I have to, you know what I mean? Like I really Definitely. have to get in there and, and make sure that I'm supporting these women, these, um, these mothers. So um, the intraparting is definitely going to touch on that, like how to support labor in the hospital, um, epidural birth, how to support that, um, how to uh, recognize different, um, you know, things that are being said by the doctors in the, in the sure. room or the midwives. Um yeah, your medicine, yeah. their different induction methods, you know, wh what they are, um, how they're used um, interchangeably right. and things like that. Um, different and pain like relief said, options. Advocacy. Yeah, all of that. I want to give, uh, take a pause and give a shout out to <clears throat> all of the birth doulas that do hospital births out there. You said a mouthful. You said it's near and dear to your heart. This hospital doula work is hard work. I commend you for it. I definitely uh, put my time in. You know, I, I, I checked that, we were clocked in on that one for some years, and I was happy to leave it. <laughs> it, it is. And, I, and I'm out to so, transport. It's almost like, oh, I don't want to go in there. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's mentally draining. 
It's not even the physical work is definitely a big part of it, but mentally, like you said, that advocacy piece, because you have to finesse the staff. You have yeah. to know how to finesse the room. You can't yeah. come on too strong or they put you out. Nope. Right. I have definitely been on the naughty list in a couple of hospitals. <laughs> I was I was on the naughty list last was it last week? Last week when I went, went to Northside Gwinnett. I know I was on the naughty list yeah. I caught myself. So I was like, because they were yeah. gonna put me out of there. But um, when they come for you, like uh, and what's your name again? <laughs> you know you on the list. <laughs> yeah. Worse. You might want to get creative. Sequita. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually from North Carolina. I ain't even from Georgia. <laughs> no, right. you created. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to uh, that that hospital is not for it's not for everybody. I, I'm gonna be completely yeah. honest. It's not oh for everybody. Goodness. Um, it is an extreme like it's a huge mental drain. Um, it really yeah. is. I am so when I come home from my home birth. I'm like, whew, I, I can sleep. I know, you still food. got some little energy in you. Yeah. But after them hospital births, I'm drained. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm exhausted because it is, it is, it's a fight. It really is a fight mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, it's very rare that you get, like, you know, an experience where it's like, whoo, okay, this was a good one, you know. <laughs> um, I love to say I have a track record where me and my clients get there, and they either – in transition or crowning if it's not it's oh that's a beautiful I, thing yes i'm so thankful because i i can't i can we can't sit there all that time so right. my inductions i'd be like oh why we gotta do this but <laughs> you know what i mean it has to happen yeah induction um, that's a process yeah but so it yeah is. we're gonna talk about all of that um in the training for sure in that intro yeah. part of um section we'll go over all the things and then in the postpartum um, and me and Tamisha will touch on it a little bit more. Um, I think we're going to come on next week. But um, in the postpartum, we'll talk about like um, the herbs that you can use in postpartum, um, how to be supported, creating a postpartum plan, um, mm -hmm. how important that is, um, centering your mental health, um, helping your clients to center their mental health in the postpartum. Um, and so, yeah. And then also there's a... Um, a business piece, right? That I think Claudia is going to do. Um, she is. She is. Yeah. That's going to be an added asset to what I think. Um, so Claudia is our uh, deputy director of the Atlanta Duba Collective. And she's also a paralegal. And so when I tell y'all the information she brings to the table, man, she is a beast when it comes to contracts. Um, I, can't, I can't praise her enough. Like, I'm learning so much from her um, and just how she organizes and... Um, just the language, the legal jargon of a document. When I say this sister can create a beautiful document that that will have you feeling like a coat of armor, you know what I'm saying? Like you up on Avengers or something with your cape <laughs> on and you're just feeling like, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, she's she's the truth. She's the truth when it comes to, um, to, to drafting contracts. So she is eager to share her expertise with our community because she said that um, in her... In doing this work, she's looked at a lot of contracts that doulas have drafted. She said she even took an uh, um, online uh, CLAT workshop for building your contract. And she said, you know, it, it just was, um, in her words, mediocre. Uh, she said what it left, <laughs> she was disappointed in it altogether. <laughs> and she knew because, again, you can come from a paralegal mindset. All that legal jargon, none of it was there right. in, that, in that work, in the um, in the contracts of this workshop that this um, birth worker was offering. So I'm eager and excited to even take that training, that yeah, part of the training from her. Um, so like you said, we're going to close out the um, the understanding birth work training with Claudia's piece. I think that'll be the second half of the last day. And right. so I just know she's going to come with the tools and the jewels, baby. Just be ready for it. Yeah, she will <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, that's what, I, I love that about Claudia. I'm always like, can you look at this for me and make sure I said it right? Yes. Like, am I do you know? Um, yeah, but yes. she she definitely is the truth when it comes to making sure things are are all together. So the training is it's still early bird, right? Until I think December twentieth. Uh, no, it's mistaken. early bird now. Early bird now, actually, up until. Um, Gosh, I should have had my dates together, y'all. I apologize, but check us out on our website. You go to, <clears throat> even in our Instagram um, link tree, um, if you, can, you can go to events, and it'll show up for you right there. Understanding Birth Work Training is also on our website under events. 
and you'll see the dates there listed as well. We have three that we're going to offer next year. We have uh, scholarships available for this training, partial and full coming up. We already have um, several people um, registered for this training already. <clears throat> we do have a cap. It will be virtual. So if anybody, you know, outside of Atlanta want to take it, you're most welcome to do that. Um, we encourage you to to, to chime in and, and um, apply for it. We understand that this is something new that we're introducing to the community. And so you come across something new, you can be a little bit skeptical. But trust me, if you are a, a doula that has already has taken a training or you're a birth worker that's been to some births, we want you to have some base knowledge of birth, right. of going to births, birth work. It's not for a green new doula. If you feel like that, you can keep up with the language and you can keep up with the information by all means. Come on and get it. But um, ultimately, it's designed for someone that has already taken a base training or has already been to some births and inundated and familiar with birth work in some capacity before right. you take this training. Because it's, it's designed really just to enhance your knowledge and build your confidence um, of birth. And it can also be considered just another step towards midwifery if that's a goal that you right. have as well. Okay, yeah, no, that's real. Yeah, um, it definitely can be a pre midwifery, um, like education. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I didn't even think about that. Um, Claudia oh, yeah. did confirm that the early bird is until December 20th, so that's 550 early bird fee until December 20th. Um, like Sakisa mm -hmm. said, the scholarship, um, uh, form is still open and available, so you can, um, you know find it on our website as well and if you you know if you have a need definitely please apply for the scholarship and we're reviewing those um on a you know on a um per per uh case basis case yes. case per case <laughs> basis That's the word. right right the scholarship is case by case basis we do yes. read the stories um and to understand the need right yes. um yes. so certainly be transparent you know understand that your information is confidential uh, however, we need to understand your need for this scholarship. Yes. Because we are a nonprofit, right? And so we, <laughs> we are, are certainly working towards grant funding um, and, and seeking to and hoping and attracting that to us in the very near future. At the same time, um, you know, we're community-based. We're community-based programming, and we rely greatly on the community for support. So we also like you to understand that any um, donations of free love offerings that you share with us goes directly back into our community in some capacity um, we are black female led black female org um all the good all the things all the things trying to lift uplift uh black women in our communities because we understand that we are the nation builders we um you know we're on the forefront of our families and if if mama ain't right Nobody ain't right. Nobody so ain't right. Best way to make the family right is to keep mama right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we work in the do. That's <laughs> it. And I think that's the other beautiful thing is all of the barrier free um knowledge and trainings and all these things. Sakisa also does another training for doulas, um, the uh yes. advanced doula skills training. And I learned yes. so much from that. I still pull my book out. Like when my clients talk about their glucose numbers and I'm like, let me check what my book say, you know, um, <laughs> love it. The training, um, highly discount free, right? It's a free training. If you yeah. Know. That one is, um, sponsored training by my mm -hmm. sister song. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. also, um, application based case okay. based. So yeah. yeah. And it also requires you to have to have already been a doula in some capacity. Um, right. That one right. is advanced. So this one is like a medium. The training that the understanding birth work is a medium between. Um, if, you, if you will look at it as phases one, two, and three, it would be two, right? Right. One would be a regular um, a entry level doula training, and then understanding birth work is just going to help you, you um, enhance your knowledge, right? Help you build your confidence, and, and again, fill the gaps that we find that are left out from some of the um, entry level. Uh, do the workshops out there and then advanced do a skills training truly is pre made with me. That's where we're getting into some clinicals. We're teaching you about urine analysis and, like you mentioned, glucose readings and um, uh, blood pressures and things of that nature. So, yo, all in alignment with helping you to reinforce your knowledge base so that we can help save ourselves, right, from this maternity crisis that we have right now, specifically in Georgia. That's really the um that's really the the um the catalyst 
the biggest catalyst for these two trainings. Um, and definitely the advanced dual skills training was lifted up in response to the Black maternal health crisis that we're, we're facing. And heaven only knows what these statistics are going to look like um, after COVID, because the stories that many of us have heard and even experienced during COVID for Black women is just <laughs> traumatizing, right? Traumatizing. And so the, 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 the numbers are going to be just ridiculous. I know it's going to be gross after um, when they, whenever the CDC released them after COVID. But nonetheless, <clears throat> that was the uh, catalyst for the, mater for the advanced dual skills training to help arm birth workers with some clinical, some basic clinical knowledge with tools that you can purchase from Walmart and Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. And then here we have that understanding birth work training. Again, that's another leg that I feel that is essential and necessary um, to help you just have a, a understanding, right? You get your understanding in your um in your in your uh entry level doula training and then you come to us and get an understanding baby we're going to understand birth work yep. <laughs> it's a powerful title and i didn't come up with it i can't take credit for that that was a collective effort to come up with a powerful title to help people comprehend exactly what we're giving you an yep. understanding not an understanding yeah understanding i love that right? i love that yeah me too that yeah, put, put it all, gave me all the feels, put it all together. I, hey. I love that. Yes. So um, I've had a few questions about membership. When will okay. membership for the collective be opening um, next year? And what does membership usually look like? Like, how do we um, on board? That's an excellent question. Uh, we actually have a membership committee that is spearheaded by our deputy director. Um, and they are working extensively, that committee is, to help um formulate a new membership process now i okay. will be fully transparent up until i would say even you came on chanel um our membership process was very fluid i was me it was me it was me it was my personality right it was like <laughs> oh you're doing you come on let's 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 go save lives mm -hmm. you know and so as we formalize ourselves in the community as a nonprofit organization and um understand <clears throat> the impact that we are having in the community it has become necessary to have a more formal membership process. Right. And so from what I'm told, it will open up. We uh, want to say in March, and if Claudia is still on, please could be, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's going to open up in March. I think the application might hit the, the, uh, may hit the ground in late January, February, somewhere like that. Okay. And then they're going to start doing the interview process in March and bring that those people on in April. I can't tell you how many we're looking to bring on board next year. Um, all of those things are still up for conversation. I will tell you that um, there is a collective decision to maintain um, a certain exclusivity for the Atlanta Duba Collective, right? So we won't be bringing on 50 members. Don't okay. expect that, right? We want to have, um, we want to maintain a sisterhood like we have. And we want to maintain a certain um, decorum within the community. So we will be taking on maybe a modest amount. I don't know, a dozen, two dozen. I don't know. The jury's still out on that. But we are looking to open up again um, early next year. So just Claudia. I was supposed to look out. She's in there? What Claudia yeah, said? she said. So uh, applications will open in January. Members will be added by March 2022. And uh, information... Yeah, information will be posted in the in the next in the coming days. Hey, yeah, I'm excited about that. I love when we get new members. That's just me too. That's just yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. No, keep it. I, I, I love that too. It's like something about the energy. Just keep it fresh, you know. It does. Um, yeah, it does. So like you know, and keep it fresh. New ideas, because everybody, like I said, everybody has something that they bring to the table. New skill sets, you know, and it's just it's always exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. have a better word <laughs> for me. So, yeah, I love that. So before we go, I just I did want to ask you, like, I know that there's been a lot of confusion lately, just from the midwives perspective about like the difference between doulas and midwives mm -hmm. and those kind of things. If you could just touch on that a little bit and then, um, yeah, just your, from your perspective, like what are the the um, the differences? How do you feel about, you know? the whole thing, the whole conversation. Yeah. Oh, sis, I appreciate you lifting that up because that is a heartfelt topic. You know, um, 
since we are seeing this resurgence of home birth, right, there is a, a growing confusion from the community about the difference between a doula and a midwife. So I've come on my own personal platform many times now. Um, I don't know, three, four, five, I don't know how many times I've come on just on this topic alone to try to help people understand the difference. Um, I will be transparent and say anybody can catch a baby, right? At birth, it's time the baby's coming. Boom, somebody's going to be there to catch, right? Somebody want to keep the baby from hitting the floor, keep the baby warm, give the baby to mom. Midwifery <laughs> requires <clears throat> years. It really does. And I will be honest, when I was in my training, I couldn't understand why it took so long until I became a midwife. Mm -hmm. It really does require years of seeing varieties of births. Some programs require you to go to 50 births, some 100 births. And it's necessary. I will be honest, it is necessary because birth is so unique and so individual for every person. Even the same woman will have different birth experiences. I have four children. Every one of those birth experiences was different, right? And so to be able to understand the different dynamics and things that can come up in the pregnancy, in the birth itself and in the postpartum requires skills. It requires you to have some type of managerial um, knowledge of how to intervene holistically to get the best possible outcome. So the best way to have that is through experience. So it does bother me when I find out that, or when I learned that a doula was present at an unassisted or a free birth, and then there was a negative outcome because it, um, it places a, a, a stain for one on home birth as a whole. Right. And then they begin to look at that particular family will go onto their social media platform and just discredit home birth or discredit um, midwives as a whole for something that a, a doula did. And so that's where I'm starting to see a rift and we don't need that. We, we can't need afford us. it. We can't afford that. We need midwives, need doulas, doulas need midwives, and it is critical that everyone stay within their scope. Even though I teach doulas extra skills, like I said, the advanced doula skills training gives you some clinical skills, it doesn't necessarily make you a midwife. As I mentioned, it is a pathway into midwifery. I will definitely say that we need a shorter pathway. Most of them now are about five years long. Even if you go the nurse midwifery route, it's going to require you to get your bachelor's. <clears throat> That's about four years and another year or so in women's studies or midwifery. So you're looking at essentially a five-year pathway. To get a three-year pathway up to date, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, most cases you had to go out of the country. There was a school in El Paso, Texas for a long time for a couple of decades, I want to say, and it may still exist that had a three-year pathway, but you had to speak fluent Spanish to be a part of that pathway. I feel like I've so, seen that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. and so it, it can be long, it can be strenuous, but I promise you it is worth it. If we can have a birth center, which is one of the things that um, Jenny Joseph is working on and she has lifted up down there in Florida to help shorten that pathway where you can get those births, you can get those 50 to 100 births pretty quickly, that can certainly help to um, expedite or uh, shorten your time that you are, that you are training, your, your schoolage time. Even mid, uh, midwifery mission trips, which is what I did. I went, I went on two of them. And that's something that I'm, our, me and Cookie were talking about trying to create even for 2020. And I really want to put that back on the books, some type of um, um, study abroad or um, mission trip, because you get so many skills when you go to a developing country. You get to see so many different dynamics and variations of birth, and it can just, um, um, ex what's the word I'm looking for? Like quantum, quantify your knowledge in a very yeah. short window of time. <clears throat> And when I went on those mission trips, I was pretty, um, it was just me and another sister of color. We were the only black women on those trips, right? Myself and I put her name out there, Karina. We did two of them together. Mm. So, um, yeah, I know I went down a, I went down a rabbit hole. <laughs> no, I, like I said, that, was that was amazing. a topic for me. And it's, it really is family because of the things that I hear personally. I have people coming to my home. I, I just had one, a client. <laughs> One of my clients told me back in September that she had a friend that was going to do a free birth with the doula. And I advised against that. I said, the doula and that client can call me. 
she should, you know, let's just, let's just talk. Maybe I can negotiate something. I never heard from that mother. Mm -hmm. Y'all three weeks ago, no, two weeks ago, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. The um, baby stayed in NICU for almost two weeks because the baby got stuck coming out. And when I learned about the story, it sounded like just some basic skills had that doula known what to do, mm -hmm. right? Because babies sometimes get stuck. What do you do? I, it's happened to me a couple of times, a few times. Mm -hmm. What do you do when that baby's stuck in the birth canal? That's the skill set you learn as a midwife. What do you do if your baby comes out and it's blue? It's not breathing. That's happened. What do you do? You need neonatal resuscitation skills in order to help bring it. That just happened to me a few weeks ago. Terrifying. But right. you got to know what to do. And you can't be terrified in the moment. You're the midwife. And if that baby transitions or something happens in their family, I don't care if you say, I'm just a doula. I was just here to help. They are going to blame you. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. There was a story last year in New Orleans. One of my dude, my midwife friends out there said two doulas was being sued for being at unassisted or free births, and now the family was blaming them for it, the demise of their baby or something that didn't go right. So I'm telling you, <laughs> do what you don't, what you want to have your skills together. You want to have your, your, your legal paperwork. That's when you come on to this understanding birth work and get the, your contracts from Claudia, right? You want to have your paperwork in order to protect yourself and your family. You want to understand the laws if you're doing this work in Georgia. You definitely yeah, sure. want to understand the laws and how you fit in. You want to align yourself with midwives who are doing this work, who can help you, who you can reach into at four in the morning when you don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who is your team? Who is your network? Who yeah. is your backup? That happened when a doula was supposed to be at a birth. Like a month ago, she was going to be at a free birth. And then it came up in our midwifery pro. She was in an accident, couldn't get there, had no, who was going to back her up? And she was supposed to be the midwife at the birth. Wow. And so... One of our midwives went and stood in at that birth for her, but she didn't have a network. We work together. You want to have backup. You want to have a network for those type of unforeseen circumstances. I was sick recently. I had to call in my back work, my backup. I had runny gut, my bad, y'all. I don't really be neat like that, and I dived in for Thanksgiving. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> yeah, had you messed like, up? Can't go to a birth like this. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look, I'm I'm picturing it. Not can cute. you imagine? That's Look, I just cute. was holding my dad, so I can what? only imagine what that was. Shoot, been. they push, you push. It's a bad, it's a bad look. <laughs> <laughs> that totally went left. But yes, I can I can, yeah, stay home. Stay home for that. that is, <laughs> so you want to have your back up. <laughs> So that's just, that's just my, my soapbox. It's a lot of dynamics to being a midwife. It's just not, I called a baby and I'm a midwife. Anybody could do that, right? right? Those skills are necessary. Those years of training are necessary. To be a doula, essentially, I tell folks, it's a, a few weeks, really. To be a midwife, it's a few years. Doula work is non-clinical. Midwifery is clinical. We are clinicians. And that's the difference, right? So please, 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 by all means, stay in your scope. If you want to be a midwife, take our understanding birth work training. You can take our advanced skills training, yes. right? You can apprentice with a midwife and get your skills. There are so many ways that you can, in pathways, that you can work into becoming a midwife. But don't just put the hat on and it don't fit, right? <laughs> You're trying yeah. to force it and it's not and fit. I, and I, Find I, yourself. Yeah. You know, in an so, uncompromising situation. Yeah. I am so um, hopeful of the, of what it will look like in like three, four, five years with yeah. all of these trained midwives, like whether it's traditional yeah. CNM, CPM, whatever, but I'm just, sure. like, I don't know. I'm just so hopeful of these black midwives that are going to be, you know, out here saving saving us you know what i mean and and For real. also too i think what That's people true. miss is that the way you birth your child into this world we already have so much trauma embedded in our dna right and the way you birth your baby that that's an experience that is also embedded in them as well and so mm -hmm. you know we need we need us like you said we need right? us and so we need but us, we need us 
we need us to be doing it the right way. Um, we need yes. us to be respected because if not, it's going to mess it up for the next generation completely and totally ruin it. Um, yes. So and when you're thinking of that, not thinking from a place of ego or like I can just do this, but think about how it's going to impact because this work is not this work is not personal. It's literally, it's all service. It's for other people. It's for, yeah. like I said, the next generation. So, you I know, think that. of that. Yeah, think of that before we just, because I, you know, I'm scared. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll let the fear go one day. But for right now, I'm going to just keep learning. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to keep learning. <laughs> so thank to. you so much. Thank you so much thank for joining for me. Thank you love. Thank you for everyone who um, came on with us. I feel like somebody, oh, Shanika um, was telling us, thank you so much. She said her daughter's birth experience was amazing. Thanks to you and mm. I. Thank you both for continuing to educate the community. So, Aww. yes. Thank you, mommy. I love Shanika and Affinity and baby Braylon. <laughs> all right well thank you uh, Sakisa we will talk soon and y'all have a great mm -hmm. rest of your Monday all right sis make Bye. it good you too Peace.